Welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston, where we zone in on black and brown relations and our journey to empowering our communities. Thank you for joining the Empowerment Zone. I am your host, Ramona Houston. Dave Ramsey has a seven step financial plan and we have already had an episode talking about the first three steps of his financial plan. And today we're going to have part two. The, and we're talking about Dave Ramsey's financial plan. Does it really work for us? This is all about black economics. And today our guest is Mr. Brian Jennings, which you all know so well. So we're happy to have you, Brian, to let's let's get right on it. Can you give us a brief recap? for those who didn't uh, hear your first episode about what Dave Ramsey's seven-step financial plan is, uh, a brief review of the first three that we've already covered, and let's go right into the uh, steps four through seven. Okay, great. Well, let's go ahead and briefly go over what Dave Ramsey's plan is. There's seven steps. These seven steps, are, number one is to save $1,000 for emergency fund. Get started on your emergency fund because most Americans, if a five hundred dollar expense comes up, you know about half of us can't cover that expense or American household. So the first step is to save a thousand dollars and start that emergency fund to fall back on. The second step is to pay off all your debts except for your house. So you work on your high interest debts, your credit cards, you pay those down, you pay down student loans, and eventually you're going to get to your mortgage. Uh, you're going to get to your auto loan. Um, from the you know, highest interest to lowest interest, you're gonna pay those down. The third step is to save three to six months of expenses. Number four in Dave Ramsey's plan is to invest 15% of your income into the stock market 401k, um, some employer-sponsored uh, investment plan. Um, number six, save for uh, retirement. Pay off your home early, six, step six. Step seven is build wealth and give. Excuse me, step five is save for your children's college fund. And then number six is pay off your home early. Seven, wealth and giving. Okay, so in the first segment, we talked about how this plan sounds good in, in theory. But in practice, when we see what's going on in the American economy, we, we see how uh, generational wealth is growing for Americans in general, particularly black, black and brown people, we see that we're not in the best of position for, for success. When you look at the last uh, 11 years after the last recession, we've had unprecedented amounts of growth and domestic growth production or GDP. But at the same time, we also see that the amount of loans, consumer debt is just skyrocketing over the same 11 years. So we live in a country where we're the wealthiest country in the world. There are economic gaps, there's inequality gaps within our economic system because we're the wealthiest country we're growing in wealth, but then at the same time, we're growing in debt. We know that 90% of the, of the wealth in America is captured by the top 10%. And we're going to get into furthermore why this plan doesn't help change that. And also, you know, we'll talk about our culture and how that, how that hinders us as well and how Americans believe and how we treat money. So... So let's kind of jump into kind of our belief systems as one culprit. So we can't entirely say our belief system is a culprit 100%, but then also we do have to talk about the government, how they play a role in our lack of financial success or lack of generational wealth building. One aspect, we talked about a little bit, we won't jump much on it, but one aspect is that American corporations don't pay people very well. 
So it is hard to accumulate wealth for the middle class and lower middle class and to move up the economic ladder if the corporations and, and employers do not pay well. The other aspect of wealth building in America is that we have a sense of entitlement and the way in which we, we, we assume or we arrive at being successful is flawed, okay? So in America, it's all about shopping, having nice material things, going to Europe. Oh, great, I had this wonderful vacation. I went to Disneyland and I'm enjoying my life. You know, you have your home and the dog and the, and the picket fence, the American dream. So we are sold an American dream. And what happens is as we pursue the American dream, we say, oh, we are debt free. Oh my God, I am free. Oh my God. No, you're not. You're still dependent on the system. So that's some of the problems we're, we're going to be tackling today, going through the remaining steps of the Dave Ramsey plan. This sounds good. Now, when you talk about, are you saying that it's a problem being consumers or are you saying it's, uh, I kind of want you to expand on what the issue is when you talked about um, the American dream, that are we chasing just material things or what? what are you challenging right. what what are you challenging okay so in the pursuit of arriving at the american dream there's a couple things that you do or, or we do as americans one we make other people wealthy in our pursuit of the american dream and say oh we're financially free or we're financially solvent or we're in a good financial position that's a belief system that's passed on to us for example we just passed black friday and then we passed christmas holiday two holidays, right? So people go, and this blows my mind, people go and shop at Walmart for Christmas. Black Friday comes, people rush in the doors. They buy everything on the shelf and they rush out because they're getting a great deal. They get a rush out of, a rush out of it. They're excited, it's fun. And you give gifts to your friends, your family, in your children and this is the life but at the same time the second that you go into walmart and buy those items you're also suppressing your neighbor you go and support a corporation that doesn't pay people like that is backwards you shouldn't go in there so again let's just say our pursuit of material things so the way we express our rival like our love for one another is i'm gonna go buy you something i'm gonna buy my mom something for christmas my dad something my kid something my sister and my brother and it stretches us financially so where our priorities are backwards in the sense that we're focused on spending what we do have the one dollar we earn we take that one dollar and we go spend it on happiness and, and things that give us joy, temporary joy, which it's okay to a little bit, but what happens is what is sacrificed is your savings, how much money you're gonna have in retirement because you're chasing things. Understood, okay. understood. Right. Thanks for expanding upon that. So let's move on to uh, four, five, six, and seven. Sure. Okay. So step number four is it's good that you're investing for your it, retirement. It, it, for our audience, tell us what step number four is. So Okay. Step number four is investing 15% of your income into a retirement plan. Okay. Okay, so that's good because you're accumulating wealth. The bad things that come about it, investing, let's just say I need a million dollars to retire. And I'm going to break that up into $50,000 over the course of 20 years. That's good, right? If you People can live off that in retirement. Your house is paid off, great. You have less expenses. You can take care of yourself. You can live the lifestyle that you want on $50,000. The problem is that the myth that's involved in that is that life does not go that way, especially in retirement. We're going to get into what's called the sequence 
of returns. So no matter how much money you have, let's say, for example, $1 million, you, you have $1 million uh, in the bank at the time of retirement, age 65, you plan on being dead by 85, okay? So if the economy is not doing well when you retire in the first two years or the first three years, you're not going to make it. You're going to you're going to be in a position where you're going to draw money out of your retirement. Let's say you draw fifty thousand dollars out of out of your retirement account the first year. So so you have well, first off, let me say this. No, I'll, I'll say it this way: If you have a million dollars and you retire and the economy is bad, you lose ten percent that first year. Before you even touch your money, you have nine hundred thousand dollars left remaining to live on for 20 years before you even touch it because you lost 10%. You're going to draw off $50,000. So you're going to be at $850,000 your first year of retirement before you do anything. Year two, if you do the same thing and you lose money again, you're going to be at $765,000 just right there. I mean, the start of the second year of, of, um, of retirement. Okay, so you, we as Americans should think about a plan that is solvent, okay? We have to think, we have to think of ways in which we can secure our financial future. Just saying, hey, I'm gonna invest in my 401k and I'm gonna get to 65, it, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There's a lot of things you have to account for, okay? So in order to be successful in retirement, you have to have money and a source of income outside of retirement. You have to. And I'm not talking about Social Security because that may not even be around um, in the future. So if, by the time you get to retirement, you have to have something else. You can't completely depend on a system to work for you. That's good. That's, that's good. That's good. That's, that's great advice to have additional uh, resources available at retirement and to, to not just depend on uh, your retirement as your sole source of uh, income. Okay, so let's move on to step number five, save for your children's college fund. What do you think about that? Well, I think we get into some trouble here <laughs> is that we need to change our mindset on how we're saving for our children's future. Yes, in and of itself, getting a 529, making monthly contributions. 420, isn't 420? 529? 429. 529. So this is what we do. We, and I, I can't stand it, because there was a period where my wife would say, all right, we got to go to kids' birthday parties. And every other week, there was a kids' birthday party. Right? <laughs> it, it, it was bad, because we got kids in my family, kids in my wife's family, kids at church, kids at school. Oh, it's pretty bad. It, oh, I, I just didn't have any rest on the weekend. So I told my wife, I was like, look, oh, I'm not going to all these. I, you know, you're going to be the sole representative at, at those events if you want to. But every single event, oh, guess what I'm going to go do? I'm going to go buy a card and write my name in it and give it to the parent and then stick a gift card in there or or go buy a toy for a kid I don't don't particularly know very well or don't particularly like, but I'm gonna go do it, right? And so why am I gonna go run across town, spend my weekend and go buy some paper, which is going in the trash? That's not gonna be recycled. It's a waste of resources. That kid's not even gonna, the kids don't even ever look at cards. Mm -hmm. I, I, I open up a card and there's five dollars in there. Hey, boom, I'm happy. <laughs> that card is gone. All you care was about the gift card or the five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars you got as a kid. That's, right. a, that's all you're gonna remember, mm -hmm. right? So so why keep doing that? Mm -hmm. Why is it that when we go places, we feel like we have to give something? That is a conditioning that, that you it, it's it's social pressure. That's what I call it. It just it gets so what do you propose then? So this is what we do because kids always have enough toys. Parent, their parents <laughs> buy them enough toys. You don't need to buy kids toys. Don't do it. So it the saying says it, it takes a village to raise a child. In the black and brown community, for economic development, 
it, it takes a village or all communities really doesn't matter. It takes a village to raise a child, to get a child somewhere. And if you want your kids to be better off than, than where you are, you have to make economic moves to better that child, right? So instead of the gift, how about you say, hey, all right, everyone, we're gonna get together, you're gonna write a check, $25 minimum, $50, okay? And we're gonna, at some point during the party, we're gonna take all the checks and put them in the pot and we're gonna say, hey, we're investing in your future, you know, little Timmy, little Johnny or Susie, whomever, right? We're gonna set this money aside into your college fund so that you can be successful so you have the resources you need to go into a college program or attend trade school of some kind it needs to stop being the gifts i love that idea and uh you know that can go to all our padrinos y padrinas who are out there um uh supporting quinceañeras and other events hey let's 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 take some of that money and and put it towards a college fund. And if we start, uh, as you know, we have birthday parties very early, uh, one, two, three, four, five. If we start this tradition early, there it is it's a it's it's incredible what could happen by the time they're ready to go to college because this college fund is continuing to build. So we need to create new traditions in our families uh, instead of buying toys, instead of doing this and that, which is also fleeting, we can give to the uh, college fund. Thank you so much uh, for that, uh, uh, Brian, uh, that idea. So let's go. Right. Oh, do you want to say something else about that? So I'm going to say something else that just popped up in my head. So I, t- I spoke with uh, a, a couple of mentors you know, in the past, and one of them, I, I was in financial services as, as an advisor at some point, and uh, you know, I was meeting with a new mentor, he wanted me to come work with him, and I said, well, why do you want to work with people who are economically disadvantaged? And he goes, well, you know what? I got tired of working with millionaires and billionaires. Hmm. Crazy. I've, I've never heard that before. He said, you got tired of it? And he says, yeah, it's just not fulfilling. It's not rewarding. Mm-hmm. So again, some of, for our holiday traditions, we need to do a lot of different things. One of them, you know, I recommend for Christmas, go feed the homeless or go volunteer to help the homeless get off of the street or into a home, right? How about you go build a small home? How about you, how about you go mm-hmm. help people economically who are, uh, in poverty to get out of it. That should be the gift that you give for Christmas. You take your whole family and you guys do that together. I mean, forget the gifts. That, 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 that's a, a, a great idea because those types of gifts of helping others have much more longevity and it's, it's not so fleeting as, you know, given the little gifts we get for Christmas. Great ideas. So we need to change some traditions in our uh, community. So let's move on to baby to I don't want to call it baby. Uh, let's move on to Dave Ramsey's step number six, which is pay off your home early. Now, earlier you said you. Uh, you should be paying off everything else but your home. Uh, and but on here, Dave Ramsey says, "Pay off your home early." So what? What uh, does that work for us? No, no, you don't accelerate paying off debt. Credit card debt, yes. You don't accelerate paying off debt because you're going to need that money that you decided I'm going to give back to a bank so they can go multiply the money. You need that money. Don't accelerate paying off a debt that includes your house. Just get the 30 year mortgage instead of the 15 because the paying it off early only saves you. If it's a $300,000 home, it's only going to save you about $115,000 in interest Mm. over the course of 15 years. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so if you're paying an extra $600 a month over the course of 15 years, you could use that money somewhere else because you're going to need it in retirement. You have to start thinking about building for your retirement because it, what is $600? With $600 a month for 15 years, there are other opportunities that are going to gain you wealth, right? A a mortgage is a 4% debt. Like, why are you going to double down on 4% debt? That's not, it's not going to make or break you there, right? So if you did the money that you, that you did on the 30-year mortgage because you save 600 a month, move that somewhere else. Start being a shark tank, right? Start investing 
and other other businesses because you can't just do the uh, the four one k and sit back passively. The four one k again, you're buying shares in hundreds of different companies on the stock market. And so you're spreading your risk around because, hey, I got all this ownership in a bunch of different companies. So if one particular company fails, you know, I got 99 that are doing well, right? That's part of the stock market. But again, we need to take that risk as black and Latino people take the risk of investing directly with, with uh, other companies, okay? And doing it yourself. So that, but what I mean by doing it yourself is you go reach out to a small business. So if you don't know any directly that you can invest in, it's okay. Get a business broker. Business brokers deal with buying and selling businesses all the time. That's what they do. They facilitate those transactions between two parties or groups of people, right? So you can you can say hey i want to be a part of ownership minority ownership of a company i'm just passive i just want to invest i just want to return great there are tons of people that take your money so even if there you can make some arrangements hey i have six hundred dollars instead of paying off my home early i can take the six hundred dollars over the next 15 years and invest it in a profit sharing agreement with a business you can do local business you can do you know regional businesses the return is greater so if you go and do it yourself you get a bigger piece of the pie. You get a bigger piece of ownership, right? So if you spread your risk over hundreds of companies in the stock market, you're not in touch with those companies. You know, you don't know anything about those. Companies. <laughs> yep. You don't even know who they are. This, in, in this way, if you get involved yourself directly, you know exactly who you're working with, right? That's that's great, great advice. Um, uh, instead of uh, doubling up on your mortgage and and trying to pay your home off early, maybe you should take that extra, those extra funds and invest. And right. one of the ways of, of investing is not necessarily just in the stock market, but invest in your local businesses. Exactly. Exactly. And then to the same dollar that you're going to say, I'm going to, we talked about this before spending $50,000 or excuse me, not spending paying off $50,000 of student loan in like two years, three years. Oh, look at me. I paid off all this money. I'm like, that is not a smart financial move. You don't because a $50,000 investment can turn into $650,000 in eight years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. I'm already in touch with organizations because I do this myself. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. I already do it now. Mm -hmm. If I had fifty thousand dollars, I know someone right now. I can get that into six hundred fifty thousand in eight years. That's it. Easy, hands down, hands down. So there's a lot of, there's, go ahead. There's a lot of industries you can do it with. So another example, because you asked me, so you asked me before in the previous interview, what should we be doing instead of accelerating paying off debt? You can look into BBnomics. It's a black crowdfunding. Uh, platform. You can do black crowdfunding. You can do, um, you know, community investing where you just, you have access to more, um, you access to, you have access to a group of businesses within the, within the community. And, and here's another one. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this gym as well in terms of investing. The, the oil, the oil and gas, the fossil fuel industry, it's, it's already have, it already has reached, reaches peak, not in America, but in Europe, because banks are slowly uh, shifting who they lend money to. They're shifting away from the fossil fuels to the green energy sector. Right. So it's coming. So you might as well get on the bandwagon now. So when we have the, the next Democratic president coming on board, that whole Paris Climate Agreement, reducing mm -hmm. emissions, it's, it's good to jump on now. Go find a, a, a company that's installing solar panels. Yep. And once they get some more funding, you can invest in that company. And there you go. People are going to be getting solar panels on our homes left and right. Just say, hey, you know what? I'll fund, I'll fund your marketing. I will fund your marketing for the next 15 years. You just give me 1% of your revenue per month or something, whatever arrangement mm -hmm. you want to make. That company is going to be solvent. Solar is the, the next wave. That's it. That's it. Great advice. So last step uh, for the last few minutes, we have... Step number seven, build wealth and give. Okay, so 
here, here's another myth about whole life insurance, which Dave Ramsey does not support. Uh, we have, so I'll, I'll spend a little time talking about this. So half of America, about 54% of Americans have life insurance. That's down from 79% uh, mm -hmm. of Americans used to have insurance, like back in the 1965. Right. About 79% of American households have life insurance. And we're just dwindling today. People don't get it, don't get life insurance. We definitely need to do it. We definitely need to, uh, you know, have life insurance as a tool to lead generation wealth, right? So if you don't have it at the time of your death, you're likely not going to be leaving much behind, maybe a house. And I say maybe a house because more people that are retiring now are carrying more debt in retirement to help their, help their children. Mm -hmm. So you need to have insurance longer. The whole buy term and invest the difference and be out of debt. That's not what's happening in our economy right now. Parents into their retirement are still helping their children in, that are 25 to 40. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's true. So if you're gone and you can't no longer help, you better have something there. Because, again, a lot of our black and brown communities, uh, and by the way, I'll, I'll say this little, little gem here as well, Hispanic or Latin American groups are, you know, have the highest rate of uh, uninsured, or they're the un most uninsured group of all ethnic groups. African Americans are maybe around 10%. Hispanics around 20% under underinsured or or uninsured at all uh, and in total, Caucasians are about 7% uninsured. So they get insurance and they get more of it, right? So in order to give, you you can't really give by paying down your 401k and doing that number down to zero. Right? Because you're you're not leaving that behind. Dave Ramsey says to spend all that in your retirement. So you're just giving a house. That's really not. You could be giving much more. Mm -hmm. You know, um, also, I, I think that, you know, when you talk about steps, step seven, build wealth and give, I think giving uh, should be a part of your process all along, that you should always be philanthropic. That is part of your social mission, whether you're giving uh, to the church, whether you're giving to community organizations, or whether you start your own philanthropic foundation, you always need to be giving in service and also uh, in kind as well as financially. I don't think that that's something that you should save until you feel like you have a lot of extra money. You should always be giving. Sure. I mean, always be paying it forward. Yeah. So that we're, we're bettering uh, the next generation. So uh, one, of, uh, one of my employees right now, I'm actually helping uh, get through college and you know, planning, uh, degree planning, and looking at options. And as we, especially as minorities, to continue our movement toward toward a better future, we need to make sure that we're taking advantage. Because as a minority or any minority group, you've been disadvantaged. So there are programs for us, especially professional schools, like go to college and then go to a professional school. There are there are professional schools to help us to continue to con continue to get into some of the industries where we just don't have a lot of representation. Medical, you know, legal. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a there's a slew of industries and there's a slew of programs that we could be putting our kids into that help us uh, bridge the gap in, in a lot of communities. I mean, one, one reason, uh, and I'll say this in closing, closing. One reason that we lack some of the financial wherewithal, one industry that we do need to encourage more of our black and brown children to get into is the financial service industry. Agreed. Black and brown people make up 30% of the population, but we only make up about 4% of the nation's financial advisors. And so that's probably why your friend said he likes working with the community because he's able to educate people on financial matters that and get some fulfillment uh, from it that these groups had no awareness or knowledge of, or at least let me not say no, none, but limited knowledge and awareness of. And so he's getting he's getting fulfillment out of working with the community as a financial advisor. 
Absolutely, right. Because if, if, hey, if you don't know, you're, if you don't know or you don't have access, it's limiting your economic power. Correct. So that's one of the fields we need to encourage our young people as well as adults who are looking for their second, third careers is to go into financial services. So thank you so much, Brian. This was a great conversation as always. Can't wait to hear what you're going to school us on next. Uh, thank yeah, you. I look forward to that. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the Empowerment Zone. You have a great day. A special thank you to the incredible team of the Empowerment Zone. Terry on Gully, theme song, NADWorks, digital support, and of course, our featured guest. If you enjoyed my podcast, please subscribe. We are on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Be sure to rate us on Apple Podcasts too. Thank you for your continued support.